What's up squad, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In today's daily video I will be showing you guys how to get a lot of unique items. Firstly we have Zacrosis, a unique dragon priest mask that will give you a 50% resistance to shock and also increase your shock spell damage by a further 25%. This will make your shock spells catastrophically powerful, because very few enemies in Skyrim actually have a resistance to shock damage anyway, so it will make you hit like a truck. We will also be getting the Dragon Aspect Shout. This gives you a 25% increase in power attack damage, a 125% increase in your armor rating, and a 25% increase for fire and frost resistance, and it also gives you a 20% decrease to your shout cooldown timer. It's kind of like a god mode shout really. And then guys, we'll be getting the Ancient Nordic Pickaxe, and this is the only pickaxe in the game that will let you mine a very rare material called Stalrim, and I'll be showing you where you guys can find some Stalrim as well. With this rare material, you can create some amazing armor. And lastly guys, we have the Blood Scow Blade, a unique two-handed weapon with a base damage of 21, so that's four less than a Dragonbone Greatsword. But the Blood Scow Blade has an unlimited enchantment that fires out waves of energy as you make a power attack. So not only does this look awesome, but these waves of energy will do 30 points of damage on contact and they can also hit groups of people as well. The effect can even travel through walls and quite a far distance. It's fantastic for any two-handed character that would usually struggle with mages and archers because it gives you that ranged attack as well. The red energy will often stagger your enemies upon contact, so this gives you more time to close the gap before they kill you with their spells or arrows. And guys, just a quick tip, you can also use this magical enchantment on the Bloodscale Blade while you're using the effects of the Become Ethereal Shout. So this means that you can actually attack while we're in this ghost form, and the enemies cannot hurt us at all. And if you want to know where to get this other shout, check out the link below in the description, guys. And guys, I just wanted to tell you quickly that there's been an issue going on for many YouTubers, including myself. If you go on PewDiePie's channel, you'll find a video about it. But basically, YouTube is no longer suggesting videos to you guys, my subscribers. So even though you're subscribed to my channel, you'll find that you're missing some of my video guides. So like obviously myself and a lot of other people have noticed a huge drop in viewership. So you've probably missed some of my older videos that I've released like this week and the week before that. So just make sure you go back to my YouTube channel and just check. And let me know in the comments because I'm interested to know. But if you want to make sure that you do not miss any more of my content, make sure you also click the bell icon which you can find just next to the subscriber button on the bottom left there. That will make sure that you get notified whenever I make new content. And thanks for doing that guys. It's obviously completely up to you, I just want you to be aware that this is happening. But to get all the goodies that I've just mentioned, you need to come here on the map to Raven Rock in Solfheim. And guys, if you do not know how to get to this area of the map, please just check out the description for a guide on exactly how to get to Raven Rock. A lot of unique things we can get in this video actually and things to collect so let's get on and do this. The first thing we want to do is come over to the smith here, good old Glover because he's going to give us the pickaxe we need, the ancient Nordic pickaxe in fact. You haven't seen Crescius Corellius have you? That foolish old man's taken my pickaxe again. Why all the fuss over a simple pickaxe? No, 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 this isn't just your run-of-the-mill pickaxe. I'm talking about an ancient Nordic pickaxe. They don't exactly grow on trees, you know. Can't you just let the guard find Cretius? Um, I prefer to handle these things on my own. Look, if you see Cretius, tell him to give me that pickaxe back, and I'll pay you for the trouble. Great, so now we can go and talk to Cretius, who you'll find in a Raven Rock Mine. And that's where we need to go anyway. And guys, if you're wondering who these people are, I've basically got a mod that adds all these random NPCs into the game. And it just kind of like fills out the town a little bit more and make it seem like an actual town instead of, you know, just one with 10 NPCs in or something. So we're going to go inside Raven Rock Mine here. And this next conversation is going to be quite long, so you can skip it if you like. But it is quite an interesting story, this mine, so I suggest that you listen to it. Damn it, woman. 
I said to leave me be. Precious, last time you explored the mine, you almost fell to your death. I'm not spending the rest of my days as a widow. And I'm telling you that I'll do whatever it takes to find my great-grandfather's remains. He's down here. I can feel it. That was what almost two centuries ago. There may be nothing left to find. Just let me go, woman. Precious, you're an obstinate old fool and you're going to get yourself killed. Who in the blazes are you? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, let's talk to Cretius. Busy doing what? Why should I tell you? I don't even know who you are. Perhaps I could help. Hmm. Maybe. Been difficult trusting people lately. They think I'm crazy. But mark my words, these mines hold a secret that could put Raven Rock back on the map. What sort of secret would be hidden here? Sorry, I can't get over the fact that his face just looks like a shriveled scrotum. A secret the East Empire Company swept under the rug two centuries ago. It killed my great-grandfather and left Raven Rock with a worthless and tainted mine. Who was your great-grandfather? Gratian Kyrellius. He spent his entire life exploring ancient ruins across Tamriel. And he died in these very mines almost 200 years ago. How did he die? The East Empire Company called it a terrible accident, claiming that he was lost in a rockfall. I know better. What's your proof? My wife and I were cleaning out our home, and we came across some of my great-grandfather's things locked in an old chest. I found an unsent letter he'd written to the East Empire Company, and a key. What did the letter say? It describes a discovery that was made in the mine by some of the diggers. They wanted Gratian to take a closer look. The East Empire Company must have felt it was of great value, as they locked that section of the mine off from everyone else. So the key you've given me is to the locked section? It is. Well, I assume it is. I haven't been able to find the entrance. What else do you I admit that this does sound kind of suspicious. Waves, waves. Finally! Someone who believes me! I'm telling you, there's something big down there. Something that the East Empire Company wanted to hide from everyone. So why are you telling me all of this anyway? Look, my wife nags that I'm too old to go traipsing around these mines chasing my story. Time's my enemy. It's caught up with me before I could find the answers that I'm looking for. So, you need my help? I do. I want to know what happened to Gracia and what the East Empire Company is keeping from all of us. Any idea of where to start, then? Gretchen kept a journal of notes about his discoveries. If you can find his remains, then I'm hoping it will help. Here's everything I have. The letter, the key. Please, do this for me, so I can finally regain the respect that I've lost. Very well, I shall do this for you. The foul and we can ask about the other information. But one of the most important things to ask him is say, Glover wants his ancient Nordic pickaxe back. The damn fool doesn't even deserve to have it. The pickaxe was made for mining, not selling. I'll bet he stole it from the Skald in the first place. It doesn't belong to you, though. Oh, very well. Here, tell him I hope he drops a thing on his foot. You're a bit of a wanker, aren't you? Be careful down there. Okay, so now we're going to go downstairs and explore this mine. And I have got an EMB mod on that I've just installed. Um, I did have an issue about like the shadows being very dark. I suggest you explore these sort of um, small dead ends on the left and right here because um, if you don't kill all that, if you don't kill all the enemies here, you'll actually not get the cleared. Like um, you know, you, it won't count as clearing the mine. So there's another one just at the back of this section here. And then that's all the sort of dead end you've got to explore. Pretty easy to get to uh, take out. So yeah, what I was talking about is this EMB mod that I've installed. Bloody there you go, Telderin getting in the way as usual. But I had an issue with the shadows and the darkness, so I have edited it so that you guys can still see the video. But um, it's still I'm not such a big fan of the contrast right now between the light and dark areas. But before I found it too like overpowering. So anyway, we're just going to continue into the depths of this mine, guys. 
and we'll eventually come to a wooden door and I suggest you save the game just here because this door's kind of bugged so like you hit these wooden planks and they fall off and 99% of the time this works fine but sometimes one of these wooden planks will get stuck on the wall and you just won't be able to progress any further so it's just like a bug I want to tell you guys about so you don't you know have that issue for yourself but make sure that you um, lockpick this East Empire Company strong box as well guys and the key Cretius gave us will unlock that door. Now we can proceed into what appears to be a Nordic tomb, actually. So I'm assuming we're going to get ambushed here. Let's take out these uh, Draga. The first ones you come across are pretty weak, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Look at this guy over here shouting at me. Get wrecked, sir. Get absolutely wrecked. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. I did not see that trap there. Look at these lighting effects. This just looks so awesome. Hello there? Somebody's shouting at me. Okay. Oh, he's over there. We've actually activated the next room. But um, come over here and get this chest, guys. Don't forget this. The enemies do sort of ramp up in difficulty. Watch out for the pressure plate there that I just missed earlier. <laughs> they do ramp up in difficulty as you sort of proceed through this dungeon area. Get wrecked! Oh, there you go. You've got the Draga Scourge, who's just a lot more powerful than his uh, counterpart. And guys, if you're wondering, I'm using my two-handed warrior build here. And I am using a blade called the Ebony Blade. That guy wasn't even doing anything or attacking anyone. And this blade basically absorbs people's health as you attack them. And the enchant enchantment on it is unlimited. So it's an extremely powerful weapon because it means that this is going to be a giant ambush by the way so do take care but um it basically means guys that i can just stand there and as long as i'm hitting something in combat i can keep regenerating my health so as you can see he's you know doing quite a lot of damage to me right now but i'm just regenerating all of that health or i mean all of that damage back up so as long as you keep slashing away things then um you're going to be absolutely fine like you're just going to tank through the damage so right now we're on legendary difficulty, but I mean, you wouldn't know because, you know, this build just works so well. And you can find out how to get... Oh, there's a frost astronaut. Let's take out the mage. It's pretty tanky, man. Jesus. Just laying into him here and not really doing much damage. In fact, Teldurin's doing more damage than me. Okay, let's carry on through this dungeon then. But anyway, if you guys want to try out this build for yourself, you can find a link down below... Um, in the description to my build guide on it and here we go this is why we needed the nordic pickaxe that we got from Cretius. so it's just here guys this is the only pickaxe that can mine stavrim and stavrim is a very rare material there's literally only 10 sort of locations no there's less there's like four locations in the game where you can mine this and there are a few deposits that i'll be showing you in this video and you use this to make um, Stalrim armor, which is basically armor and weapons you can create, which not only looks awesome, but you can also use it to upgrade the unique death brand armor. And there's a Draga inside there as well, so don't get jump scared like I did the first time. No, I'm just kidding. So here are some more potions we're going to grab, and there's an alchemy table with some ingredients around it, but we're just going to carry on going through this dungeon, guys. Oh, Jesus, I forgot about these soul gems. You can shoot the soul gems off with an arrow, but otherwise they'll fire lightning at you. I'm just going to run past them, and they're going to miss me like that. And then we can go through this iron door into this rather incredible-looking location, actually. And there are some Draga Death Lords here. And there's also a secret passage in this room as well that I want to show you guys. But we'll get to that in a moment. First, let's absolutely wreck this guy. Come on. I can't, I keep forgetting that guy's name. Whenever I have like a dark elf companion with a strange name, I find I always forget their name because it's just hard to remember. And I've just picked up Teldorin. I've just picked up Teldorin from the local pub in, um, in Raven Rock. So you guys can go pick him up from there if you like. He costs 500 gold to recruit and he's a pretty damn awesome follower because he uses like one-handed weapons 
and spells as well. So he's pretty damn good. We can't go through this gate yet, guys. Instead, we've got to continue around to take out this Death Lord. If I use a Cyclone Shout on him. Boom! And he's going to get tossed. Oh, I wanted him to take uh, the full damage from like throwing him off the edge there, but I kind of messed that up a bit. See if we can knock him off. No, nope, he's too smart for that. He knows my plan. There we go. Teldrin just taking him out there. Somebody in the comment section will probably say I was pronouncing his name wrong, but you guys know me. I'm pretty bad at pronunciation. Make sure you grab this chest down here, guys. I've forgotten to bring lockpicks with me because I'm an absolute tard. There's also a level sword just here as well. And there was a potion of water walking I just picked up there. Make sure you do the same thing. The secret lever to open this is just here. So you can open that. But let me show you first. Behind this waterfall is a secret passage. So as you can see, there's actually a door behind here. So we can unlock... I just needed to add some lockpicks there so I can actually pick this uh, lock just here. Another style room deposit hidden behind this door here. So make sure you guys mine this as well. Come on, Taldoran. Keeps asking me when I'm mining that, what can I do for you? And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, man, you can mine this for me if you like, but just please stop saying the same thing. So we're going to come up here and we're going to go through that door I said was locked earlier. Here we go, guys. Now we can go through here. If you go to the left, there is a spell tome of Ice Spike. And that's usually a random spell tome, I do believe. But under these stairs here, there's another hidden chest. So make sure you loot that as well, guys. I'm just kind of like skipping through this stuff because this is quite a long dungeon. I don't want to like kind of monopolize too much of your time. If you guys like me like searching all the chests, then um, you can... Oh, there is a secret door here as well, guys. And the lever is just here. And as you can see, there's another secret chest. And I don't think this one's locked. Yeah, so we can loot this one. 20 gold. You see, was it worth it? No. What's our next move? What is our next mo move? Our next move. <laughs> and as you can see, guys, we come out on this walkway over the room that we just left. I really like it when dungeons, like, loop around like that. I think it's really cool. And, oh, God! I forgot about that bloody pressure plate just there that Teldrin stepped on as well. If we come up to the top here, there's a wooden door. And this is actually caved in. But there is a chest here for you to loot, so make sure you grab that. But we want to come through this sarcophagus to the left here. Because they've actually mined through this location. And if you follow it, you come out in this massive, sort of really unique room with all these amazing rock formations. So we're going to hop down here, guys. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the right. This is where the rock fall happened, because there's another chest here. So I'm guessing they were, like, the adventurers were carrying some loot with them. And then these rocks fell down and it trapped them inside this cavernous room. And like the water just dropping from the ceiling. It all looks amazing, doesn't it? There are some dead bodies here. Millions. Milius. Who is probably one of the adventurers. He will always have a unique weapon. No, not a unique weapon. But an enchanted weapon with a random enchantment on it. And it looks like they were getting attacked by Draga. And that's probably what killed them. We'll also find Gratian Karelius just here on the floor and if you search his body guys not pick it up you'll find the blood scow blade the unique weapon i mentioned at the start of this video and i'll show you what this does in a moment guys but let's have a look at the journal that he's holding there the 30th reigns hand fourth era 10 received a letter from the east empire company today they say that some of the miners broke through the wall in the sh in shaft three of raven rock mine and found some ruins I hope this isn't just another waste of my time like that fiasco they sent me on in Cyrodiil. I'll gather my assistant, Milius, and sail back to Ravenrock at first light. And obviously, Milius is dead now. It'll be nice to see the old house in Solfheim again. So a few days later, they arrived, finally arrived in Ravenrock, and were surprised by the number of dark elf refugees living in the town. They aren't really mining stock, but I think they'll make fine workers one day. Milius and I spent a good part of the day clearing ash from the roof of my house. That damn volcano is still erupting almost every day and night. If it wasn't for the ash covering everything, it would almost look beautiful. 8 second seed, 4th era, Milius and I are headed to Raven Rock Mine to look at whatever the miners uncovered. I think I'll stop by the old swinging scoop and pick up a few supplies before we head down. Couldn't hurt to be prepared. 
The next day looks like the miners broke right through the wall of an old Nordic barrow. I've seen this sort of thing in Skyrim before. Damn Nords have barrows dotting the landscape and almost none of them are ever marked on any maps. Looks like this barrow belongs to someone called the Bloodscow Clan. I'm going to take some rubbings of the inscriptions on the tombs and see if I can learn more information from my history books. And then the next day, it's been a few days, but it's only been one day according to his journal, but he can't find a single mention of the clan anywhere. Milius and I decided to proceed ahead. We've come to a drop down point, but I can see a massive chamber below, where we're standing now. Took the better part of a day to lower everything down and climb down the almost sheer drop. It's been an astonishing day of discovery. After exploring the large chamber beyond the drop off, I started to find the strangest weapon I've ever laid eyes upon, sitting on a pedestal of sorts. The blade appears to be flawless, and it's emitting a faint, chilling glow. Bits of parchment found around the chamber seem to call this the Bloodscow Blade. Not certain if I should remove it yet. I think I'll sleep on it. And there you have it, a little painting of the Bloodscow Blade. 12 Second Seed 4th Era. I've decided against my own better judgement to remove the Bloodscow Blade from its pedestal. Milius seems completely against it, but we need to bring this wondrous artefact with us when we find a way out of this barrack. I should have listened to Milius. The moment the blade was lifted, we were set upon by Draga. Milius fought bravely, but he fell. I was able to destroy the remaining ones, but I was badly wounded. I can barely stand. My only chance would be to find a way out of this place, but I fear that I am trapped. And now he just doesn't even know what day it is, there's a question mark next to the date. Exploring has been slow, I can only move maybe minutes at a time before I have to rest. My supplies are running low and I'm feeling weaker by the hour. The only progress I've made is finding a strange door with the markings on it that I've never seen. There appears to be something to them I'm missing as they've confounded my attempts of getting through. I'll have to study this further in order to make any progress. Barely can keep awake. I'm fairly certain that the key to this door involves the use of the Bloodscow Blade. When swinging the weapon, I'm noticing a ribbon of mystical energy emanating from it. I think by swinging the sword in different directions, it's possible to manipulate this ribbon and solve whatever puzzle this door represents. I hope that I get well enough to put this all to the test soon. Each swing is a huge effort. Last entry. I have lost track of time and my strength is fading. I can't even stand anymore. My wounds refuse to heal and I'm afraid this tomb will become my resting place. If anyone finds this journal, please send those notes onto my superiors at the East Empire Company and, and tell my wife that I love her. May RK guide me to my final rest. And there you have it guys, you can take that journal if you like. And now we have the Blood Scale Blade, so let's equip that right now guys because we need this to solve the puzzle and there's also a satchel here with one gold coin in it please kill me this is the beautiful looking puzzle door why the hell am i flying oh my god what the that was weird and as you can see if you do a sideways power attack and hit that corresponding section it will actually open the door so then we've got to do a straight power attack and we unlock the next section and this like loops around even more. Then we can do the same on the other side. So sideways power attack, like it says, and then a straight one. It's a pretty awesome puzzle, guys. I mean, I wish they had more like this. Another sideways one there, and then one final sideways one on the other side here. And here you have it, guys. The final red line appears down the center. This is the one that opens the door. So let's go ahead and open it right now. Whoa, there we go. That's just the coolest door I've ever seen in my life. What do you think, Teldarin? You're not a very you're not a man of many words like Lydia is. Lydia usually just doesn't shut up when we take her on these adventures. So let's just carefully walk past these axes, guys. As we go down this corridor. I don't think there is a chest down this corridor. I seem to I don't remember though. I'm pretty sure there isn't. Um, there is a lever at the end to open this gate, and ah, this is going to be the boss room, guys. So let's save the game here quickly so we don't die. And if we head straight on, the Dragon Priest should rise up from the depths of the water. And now, guys, you know that earlier I said pick up that potion of water walking. So let's have a look. Here it is. And now we can walk on the water, because otherwise it's really annoying to fight him. 
Because sometimes he'll just like hover above the water. So look, you see he's going across the water now and we can still lay into him. I have no idea why he's not attacking us. And you know, like, this is the first time this bug's ever happened to me. It could be a mod I've installed potentially, but um, it was working earlier. So I don't know why he's not... Oh, okay, now he's summoned something. But um, this is a very easy fight simply because he can't... He's not doing anything. Get Rex up. So after you've killed the Dragon Priest, he'll turn into a pile of ash. And if we search that, he's got 250 gold. And the Dragon Priest Mast of Zacrosis increases shock resistance by 50%. And shock spells do 25% more damage. And it also looks goddamn awesome. Oh, that's his Flame Atronaut. I thought it was um, the other guys. And this should be the Dragon Aspect shout now, guys. So make sure you pick this up as well. Word of Power, Strength, Dragon Aspect. And that's where you can learn the first word. There's actually a unique weapon you can get by using that shout. And we haven't picked up this boss chest yet, guys. So let's not forget to do that. Two gold. There's two gold. Oh, my days. Somebody help me. Well, actually, guys, that boss chest has been taken already by somebody else. The real one is here. So, 250 gold. There you go. Iron War Axe or Scorching. Leather Boots. A circular. Oh, a few, few useful things there, actually. There's also a black book here. And if you read this, it will take you to the Marius Mora's Realm of Oblivion. Where you can get some unique powers. So, make sure you do that, if you wish. I'm not going to do it right now, because... I just want to show you another few things in this dungeon uh, that I think are going to be interesting to you. This is a really cool staircase, like a waterfall going down the middle there. It's quite a cool idea. So we are going to go to Blood Scal Barrow, which is basically the exit to the dungeon. So if we open this chain here, it's going to take us out into this kind of like a tomb. And do take care, because there are quite a few bandits around here. Let's send some magical spells their way. Oh god, he's actually a mage as well. Jesus. Take him out, man. Absolutely wreck this guy. Get wrecked, son. Get wrecked! Where's the other... Oh, there she is. I can see you. Let's stagger her with our magical powers of awesomeness. There we go. She's almost down. Get wrecked. Well done, Teldarin. Now, before we actually exit this area, you're going to want to run back here where this campfire is. If you just come around the corner, there's another boss chest. That's three boss chests so far in this location, even though one didn't have anything in it. Don't need most of this stuff. Let even know why I bothered picking it up. But look at that blood scale blade, guys. Like, the scabbard is kind of, like, stitched together there. Oh, hello. Hello there. Get wrecked. Okay, let's take... Oh, my God! Oh, Jesus! It was like I was just sabotaging my follower in the back there. So we should be able to exit out of this area now. And there is another secret to be found. So let's go out to Sulfite. It is quite dark outside, though, guys. So let's take out these um, nuisance enemies. Oh, God, I'm falling! Jesus Christ! Oh, my God! I almost died. I'm going to have to get my other weapon out, the... Um, ebony blade instead here so I can absorb some health back because uh almost got killed there oh Jesus hello so as you can see look I've started absorbing health back and there's nothing he can do now so take his arrows I'm so used to playing my archer character so I always take the arrows but um there was really no need for that there because this character is a warrior oh god I'm falling again really I think Teldira has just taken out all of these enemies. I just want to show you a couple of chests. There's actually one down here, which is just there. So make sure you grab that as well, guys. That's the entrance over there that we came out at. Teldira has literally killed everyone else for me. So now if we go left here, we can find some more unique items. There's some chitin on the uh, bookshelf there. But if we come upstairs, guys... You're going to see uh, some enchanted robes here with um, boost your magicka regeneration, which you can like be quite good. So make sure you grab that if you're interested. And then if you come right to the top, 
you'll see that there's actually a treasure chest in this next tower, but you can only get it from the other tower there. There's also a funny note here which reads, Look, Merin, I'm not arguing that these towers are falling to pieces, but I think you are exaggerating about the planks falling on dash dash dash, so someone's literally got knocked out by a plank, it's pretty funny. Okay. And guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with my daily guides. And don't forget guys, you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and the links for that are down below in the description. And that's the best way to get updates as soon as I release a new video. And if you do play the Elder Scrolls Online on the North America server guys, make sure that you search for my guild. I'm on PC and the guild is called Squad ESO with no spaces and you can join it and then we can group and we can also do some PvP together. I'm basically using the guild as a way to keep in contact with you guys on that game so make sure you come and join that if you're interested. But thanks again for watching me ESO and I will see you loyal subscriber in the next Skyrim video guide so have a fantastic day and goodbye.